Hello everyone, I'm Nick, and today I'm going to talk about structs and how you can use them in your C-sharp code. If you like my video and you want to get some more C-sharp content, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. So let's talk about structs. So what are they, essentially? Well, before we can really define what structs are, we need to talk about classes, and we need to talk about um, the difference between classes and structs. So uh, classes are essentially your ability, they give you the ability to create your own types. And within those types, you can create methods and functions and variables. Um, and then you can do things like polymorphism, inheritance, all the sort of benefits that you get from object-oriented programming, you can get from classes. Um, so as an example, this is a console application with a default class called program. Uh, and then I've got uh, my entry point, which is a method, static, because it's a console application. Uh, and then because I'm in a class, I'm free to add lots of different things like uh, my own variables, for example. <clears throat> so I could add a string called my string, uh, set it to nothing, basically. And then I could reference that somewhere else. It needs to be static. And it needs to be public. And I need to spell it right. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be public. So I, I've created a variable there called my string, and I can reference it anywhere else in the class. So things like that, you know, I could add functions, I could put a lot of different functionality into this, and I could refer back to a lot of different variables. Um, so that is essentially a class, and a class is a reference type. So again, in order to talk about structs, we need to define classes, and when we define classes, we have to talk about reference and value types. So very quickly, what is the difference between the two? So reference types and value types. So whenever we store information, whenever, whenever we run code, the information is stored in memory somewhere. So it's either stored in what we call the stack for value types or the heap for reference types. So the difference is for reference types, they're stored in the heap, which means that we're actually storing a pointer to an address in memory. So because they're um, stored in the managed heap, we don't go directly to the actual memory allocation when we reference a class, we go to a pointer which then grabs the memory allocation. So it means that we can store it in in whatever part of the heap we want. It doesn't really matter as long as we've got a pointer to it. Um, it doesn't necessarily slow down performance, but there is that extra step that we have to go through. Whereas a value type, we're actually using a memory allocation on the stack. So we can go straight to that um, element in memory, we can get to its allocation, and we can use it relatively quickly. So you, you tend to see some performance benefits in some scenarios when you're using value-based uh, memory allocations. So without going into too much of a deep dive on that, it's just important to know the difference is that classes are reference types, structs are a version of classes which are actually value types. Uh, and you know, that can bring some benefits. It can also bring a lot of restrictions as we'll go into later on in the video. So if I wanted to implement a, uh, a struct here, what would I do? So I can implement a struct um, and I can, I can make a public struct if I want to. And I would just say my struct. And then there you go. So I've created um, a, a bare bones struct. Um, now, what else can I do with this? Well, at the moment, we can't really do anything with it. You know, the, the struct itself is is just is nothing. There's nothing in it. Um, so we can obviously define different properties. So the struct might have um, my property equals hello. And then we'll put that as an actual string. Now you can see there's a problem here and this is where we're coming into some of the restrictions for structs so the compiler is saying uh, that my struct which is the struct we're creating can't have an instance property or field initializer so that basically means that where we were able to define a string outside of uh, methods or somewhere in the class we can't do that in a struct the reason being because a struct is a value type and when the struct is initialized it needs to have all the values within it all the members within it initialized at the same time so there's one thing we can do with this is that we can set a constructor so we can just like we can in a class 
we can say when we create this class there is a constructor for my struct and that can receive some parameters so the parameter we're going to take in is just call it val val1 for value 1 and we'll put in our member so we've got um, string value 1 we can get it and we can set it and then in the constructor we're going to say value 1 equals whatever we're passing in val1 so we can only initialize our members through a constructor or they have to be initialized when the struct is initialized so what you need to have is you create your struct and when it's created all the members within it have been initialized we haven't got any instance variables in there because they've been initialized at, at sort of initialization of the struct if that makes sense so what we've done is we've created a struct uh, we've got a member inside the struct that we need to give a value and we've done that through a constructor so what if we wanted to um, have a different kind of constructor what if we wanted to have a parameterless constructor well we can't do that with structs that's one of the restrictions that we've got in structs at the moment so you can see here we've got structs cannot contain explicit parameterless constructors now this is set to change I think I think in the in C sharp 10 I think you might be able to use parameterless constructors yes in C sharp 10 you can so this is about to change so at the time of recording this video the the latest version of C sharp is 9 when C sharp 10 comes out you will actually be able to do this they're making changes to structures to allow you to do this stuff you'll also be able to use instance fields as well so you should in C sharp 10 be able to say um, public string my string equals that at the moment you can't do it but again in C sharp you should be able to do it we'll probably do a video on C sharp 10 sorry in C sharp 10 you should be able to do it so once C sharp 10 is out we'll probably do another video to look at structs and the updates to them so at the moment yes you have to set it as um, a property and then use parameters in a constructor so my string equals val1 my string There we go. So at the moment, that is a legal struct. So what are the other restrictions around structs? Well, you can't inherit from other structs or classes. Um, so if you want to use, say, inheritance on this, you, you wouldn't be able to inherit from program, for example. That just isn't possible. Um, and also, at the same time, you can't use the struct as a base type. So anything ab above the struct or any other classes or structs can't inherit from your struct. What you can do is use an interface. So say for example you had an interface further down the page, so my interface and that interface had uh, a method called my method. You can implement that interface. And just as if you'd done, if you'd implemented any other interfaces, you'll have to implement the members from that interface. So that is possible. So that's that's one benefit, I guess. The other thing is that you can't use finalizers, but it's quite an advanced topic in terms of things like around garbage, but garbage collection. So I wouldn't say you'd, you would mess with that too much. Um, but yeah, just so you can note that as well, you can't use finalizers in structs, and that doesn't seem to be changing in C sharp ten. So, why use a struct and when would I use a struct over a class? Well, one of the benefits of using a struct is for objects which you know are going to be short-lived. If you're just creating an object which is going to be passed around and evaluated, it doesn't need to change, it's pretty small, and usually all the components of the struct, so all the members within it, um, go together to form a single logical object then a struct is, is perfectly valid to use uh, and the benefit as well is that it's a value type so if you're looking for real performance benefits then potentially you could see them with a struct but again it, it's all based on context it doesn't necessarily mean things are going to get crazily faster but it could do depending on, on what you're building so uh, that's a good use case for a struct um, you 
potentially want to avoid using the heap. So again, talking about reference uh, reference objects and value objects. You know, if you don't necessarily want to use the heap for some reason, um, and your uh, object, your struct is going to be below 16 bytes, because again, we've got to think about the fact that we're taking up uh, a limited area in memory in the stack. Then a struct again is a good um, use case. Um, so. That, that's the key takeaways really you know if you've got an object which is fairly short-lived it's immutable so it's not going to change so you can initialize all those values when you initialize the struct um, then great a struct is fine uh, and again because you can use interfaces you could use them uh, it, when you're doing things like dependency injection and all that sort of stuff um, but if you really want to use the benefits uh, that are given to you with object-oriented programming um, then you need to stick to classes, really. You know, if you want to be able to inherit from things or you want to use the class as a building block for further abstraction, so you're going to have other classes which are going to inherit from your struct or whatever, your, your object, then a struct is not for you. Um, again, it's very much personal preference. I know a lot of developers that will just not use structs at all. They just don't see the point because they can just use a class. Again, it's it's not a huge deal if you decide to use a class, but a struct can sometimes be a nice, concise way of encapsulating a small, short-lived object which is fairly static. It's not going to change, and so it's quite it's a it's a useful thing to have in your toolkit for C Sharp. It's definitely going to be part of any certifications you do for C Sharp, um, and it could come up in some interview questions. So it's a good thing to have. Um, but again, personal preference. I don't tend to use them unless they're really really needed personally but they're there if you need them i hope this was useful again if you like the content and you want to see more hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time for some more c sharp tips and tricks